Hello and welcome to The Album Man and today I'm going to be doing another part of my top 50 albums of all time and this is going to be 30 to 21 So let's start off at number 30 we have Iron Maiden's classic album Number of the Beast So the first Iron Maiden album with Bruce Dickinson of course Featuring wonderful songs like Number of the Beast, Hallowed Be Thy Name, and Run to the Hills, which are still classics and played live all the time by the band. You know, absolutely wonderful album. But I don't think it's Iron Maiden's best. There's more Iron Maiden to come. Right, so at number 29, we have The Greatest Singer of all time in my opinion, his best solo album, and that is Dio's Holy Diver. What a wonderful singer he is, he truly is, or was even, unfortunately, the greatest vocalist ever. I mean, songs on it, Stand Up and Shout, Holy Diver, Straight Through the Heart, Rainbow in the Dark. It's just classic, it's like a greatest hit of his solo stuff, but it's not, it is just one album. It's phenomenal, you know, what more to say. And number 28, we have, this is quite an not very known blues artist, and he is Philip Sace, and this is his album Inner Revolution, in at number 28. And if you look here, you can see it's actually signed by him as well, which is pretty cool. Um, he was doing signings, of albums after his concert when I went to see him um, the year before last. He is just wonderful, especially live. And this album, he he is releasing a new album um, later this month on the 27th, I think, called Steamroller, which I'm looking forward to. And this is his second album, his first one, Peace Machine. He's got a lot of good songs in, like One Foot in the Grave, but this really is his classic. Things like Changes, Scars, Bitter Monday. Yeah, that's just the first three tracks. I mean, it really is one of the great blues albums, in my opinion. Certainly one of the most underrated albums from my list. Um, yeah, it's you really should listen to him. Check him out. He's a wonderfully talented person. Exceptional live. Okay, so let's see. In at number 27, we have another album featuring the legendary Ronnie James Dio. And this is... In my opinion, the second best album he is on, which is Mob Wars by Black Sabbath. Things like, let's say, you know, Falling Off the Edge of the World, Mob Wars, The Sign of the Southern Cross. You know, such a such a classic album. The album after the unbelievable Heaven and Hell, which you will see higher up in my list. It's just wonderful in every respect. You know, Dio's lyrics and Sabbath's music together, I mean, it really is, it's like the super group from heaven in my opinion. Tony Iommi's guitar is brilliant, Dio's voice is unbelievable, it's just, it really is just the epitome of metal, this album, it really is a classic metal album. Okay, so in, at, like I say, I think it's number 26, let's see, yep, yeah, 26. In at number 26 is A Dramatic Turn of Events by Dream Theater. I'm a huge, huge Dream Theater fan, and this is the first album to not feature Mike Portnoy, who I think is the greatest drummer of all time. And yeah, I, you know, it's a shame, but this album, it just, it's so, it, it's reinvigorated. I enjoyed stuff like Black Clouds and Silver Linings, Train of Thought. Um, you know, it's Systematic Chaos, especially Systematic Chaos, but this album, it's just, they, they're reinvigorated, they're just, you know, it's one of the best albums since Metropolis Part 2, in my opinion, yeah, a classic DT album. Okay, so at number 25, we have Marillion's Clutching at Straws which is the last Marillion album to feature the wonderful and poetic Fish, featuring such wonderful songs as Warm Wet Circles, 
incommunicado, sugar mice, white washing, yeah, it's just, it's just brilliant. It's a brilliant concept album about alcoholism. I personally, out of alcohol related concepts I can think of, it's my favourite. I mean, the only other one I can think of is the 12 Step Suite by Mike Portnoy, split out between a lot of albums. But I think it's just amazing. Especially the sound like Sugar Mice. Really, if you don't know the song, listen to it. If you're a fan of sort of, it's sort of, you know, proggy. It's just classic, yeah. Okay, at number 24, we have my favourite, well, I would say this is my favourite blues album of all time, and my favourite Joe Bonamassa album, which is A New Yesterday Live. It's the first ever album of his I actually ever listened to. And things like Colour and Shape. If heartaches were nickels, a new day yesterday. He is he's a live artist. The studio version of this, you know, it's a brilliant album, but it just doesn't have that live energy which he manages to create on stage. And can't wait to go and see him live in Blackpool, which is very soon. And yeah, I mean, this is, in my opinion, the definitive blues album. It's just got it's just perfect in you know virtually every way. Unbelievable album. Right, then we have at number 23, we have Black Holes and Revelations by Muse, featuring things like Starlight, Supermassive Black Hole, Invincible, Knights of Cydonia. Yeah, it, it's my favourite Muse album. I am a pretty big Muse fan in all the albums. I was very disappointed by their last album, um, the one with Uprising and Resistance on. Resist yeah, I think it was just called Resistance, wasn't it? I think so. But, no, this is the definitive Muse album for me. I just... It's hard to explain. Muse have their own sort of unique sound. I think Matt Bellamy's guitar work on this is brilliant. I think he really is such a great up-and-coming guitarist. Yeah, it's such a, such a great album. There's not really... It's very hard to describe Muse. They just have such a, such a sound to them. At 22, we have Green Day's classic, American Idiot. My favourite Green Day album, and things like American Idiot, Jesus Suburbia, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Holiday, um, Wake Me Up When September Ends. Yeah, it has basically, in my opinion, they're all the best songs on one album. I do like a lot of the older stuff, but yeah, this album is just so great. It's just, you know... It, I mean, what could be better than a political album, you know, going on about how dreadful George Bush is? Things like Holiday about the American invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's just American Idiot, you know, clearly directly about George Bush himself. It's just such a, such a brilliant political album, and it just has an energy to it, and it's just catchy as hell, the choruses. And at number 21, to include this part is probably what I would say is the most hated album in my list and the album that is most likely to get me dislikes than any other album and that is All the White Reasons by Nickelback. Now a lot of people would say this is a mainstream pile of crap. I've heard that. So I've had Jack Cookies before and Disc fell out. Um People would say that it's just, you know, it's mainstream, it's commercial, it's pop rock. No, it's it's none of those things. Well, okay, it is mainstream, it is commercial. It's not pop rock, though. Things like Side of a Bullet. Sorry about that quick little interruption. Anyway, so, talk about All the White Reasons by Nickelback. Yeah, things like Side of a Bullet, Animals, I wouldn't say that that commercial. They're, I mean, I'm not saying these are mega death by any stretch of the imagination or Metallica or anything, but, you know, it's it's still going into hard work, some of these songs. And I just think it's great. I love things like Rockstar, Photograph, as I said, Animal Side of a Bullet. I just think there's nothing wrong with a catchy song. If a song's catchy, that's fine. I'm personally a Nickelback fan, so I'm live on this tour, and, you know, I love them. That's just my opinion. I'm sure most people do not share that same opinion. Anyway, thanks for watching my top 50 albums from 30 to 21 and next Friday slash Saturday because it seemed to run over to Saturday quite a bit 
I will be doing from 20 to 11. Okay, so look out for that. This has been the Album Man. Comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.